Mr. Graham. Not Mr. Grassley. Not guilty. Ms. Lummis. Not guilty. Acquitted again. The Senate judges that the respondent, Donald John Trump, former president of the United States, is not guilty as charged in the article of impeachment. The second time in history that the majority of Republicans firmly stood with the former president, failing to convict him for inciting insurrection. The failure to convict Donald Trump will live as a vote of infamy in the history of the United States Senate. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is now working to establish the creation of a 9-11 type commission to investigate the deadly siege on the Capitol. While seven Republicans broke party ranks to join all 50 Democrats in voting for the former president's conviction, the Senate still fell 10 votes short. This was the opportunity to say this is not what we are and to split from him. And if they just hold him accountable one time, the allure, the magnetism that he has, the power that he has over people will disappear. And they didn't do that on Saturday. And yet those seven votes, which led to the most bipartisan vote ever to convict a president, Mr. Cassidy, highlight the small but growing divisions within the GOP, a party whose members now seem divided in their ideologies as they debate over the role of Trump in the future of their party. I think we're going to have a real battle for the soul of the Republican Party over the next couple of years. Republican Nikki Haley, who for the most part had stood by the former president, is now calling for her party to break ties with him, telling Politico he went down a path he shouldn't have, and we shouldn't have followed him, and we shouldn't have listened to him, and we can't let that ever happen again. But some prominent Republicans disagree. On Sunday, Senator Lindsey Graham appeared on Fox News saying the former president is, quote, ready to rebuild the Republican Party, starting with next year's midterms. I'm going to go down to talk with him next week, play a little golf in Florida. And I said, Mr. President, uh, this MAGA movement needs to continue. Uh, we need to unite the party. Trump plus is the way back in 2022. I think he's making the, the wrong call. I don't think the future of the party or this country is tied with Trump. Republican Elizabeth Newman used to work for Trump's Department of Homeland Security, but now she says she's joined forces with three other Republicans to take back the GOP from being the so-called party of Trump. We know we have an uphill battle, but somebody has got to stand up to this bully and, and stand up to Trumpism and say no more. And we want to purge the party of people that think that what Trump stands for is our future. Her organization, called the Republican Accountability Project, has pledged to help and defend other Republicans running for office who do not align themselves with Trump's MAGA doctrine. We decided that we're going to raise $50 million um, and do two things. We're going to get the backs of those uh, Republicans who have uh, told their constituents the truth that the election was not stolen. Um, and if they are primaried, we will uh, use that money to help defend them in uh, their next election. And for those Republicans who have done uh, the most damage, we are going to uh, use that money to remind their constituents of how they have been lied to uh, by these politicians. We put up billboards and they're very simple. We are calling them straight out saying, Senator Cruz, you lied. And we will continue to hold them accountable throughout the next two years here as we lead up to the next election cycle. She says the recent censures of Republicans like Representative Liz Cheney in her home state of Wyoming and Senator Bill Cassidy in Louisiana show there is a need for her organization. These are men and women who had the courage uh, to both tell their constituents the election was not stolen and they voted their, the, their conviction. Those are the people that we're looking to help us as we figure out uh, the path forward for where the Republican Party goes in the future. According to a new ABC News Ipsos poll, more than half of Americans say that Trump should have been convicted. 56 said the same last week before the Senate voted to acquit. In a statement celebrating the acquittal, President Trump said our historic, patriotic and beautiful movement to make America great again has only just begun. Today, Trump made a brief drive by appearance at a pro Trump President's Day rally, waving to a few hundred of his supporters. It remains to be seen how many in the GOP would back Trump's agenda. Before you start talking about the former president's 
political future. You got to be thinking about his legal future. I mean, for some of the crimes he's being investigated for, he could serve time. These words from Mitch McConnell, the Senate's minority leader, after the impeachment vote left many shocked. Didn't get away with anything yet. Yeah. We have a criminal justice system in this country. We have civil litigation. And former presidents are not immune from being accountable by either one. McConnell, who voted to acquit, is perhaps foreshadowing the potential legal battles the former president is still expected to face. I think that the two that the president should be most concerned about are the Fulton County DA investigation into efforts to overturn the election and the Manhattan DA investigation into President Trump's businesses with the possibility of bank fraud, tax fraud, insurance fraud. It is yet to be seen whether Trump will have his day in court, but in the meantime, the GOP must figure out how to convince American voters of the way forward. They need to say that they're about real issues. Well, they've actually become, I think, more the party of corporate interests. And Trump was able to galvanize some of these quote unquote people who were left out, but he didn't do it on issues. He did it on hate and division. And so if there's any way for the Republican Party to try to appeal to people who don't respond to those crazy extreme ideals, but still want to be heard, I think the Republican Party needs to get back to making sure they're meeting the needs of, of regular everyday people in their party. We've got to get past this language of hate for our political enemy. We have so f lost that basic sense of dignity and respect for another human being. And, and we've got to go back to that as a country in order for us to rebuild from here. Earlier this evening, I spoke with one of the impeachment managers, California Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us tonight. You know, we, we expected an acquittal. The outcome of the impeachment trial was not a surprise, but you say that it was all worth it. What do you think was accomplished? And do you think any of former President Trump's most staunch supporters were swayed at all by any of the evidence presented? We were trying to persuade the American people that you can't incite our own people to attack our capital the day that we're counting every American's uh, vote. Uh, we showed our country uh, that we could have an accountability uh, exercise like impeachment, the most bipartisan impeachment vote ever in both the House and in the Senate, and also in the court of public opinion. An ABC News poll today showed that nearly 60 percent of Americans believe that Donald Trump should be disqualified from ever holding office again. So while legally he may not be disqualified, by showing the country what he did, I think functionally the voters will disqualify him. And what you just touched on, how many Americans um, wanted to see President Trump held accountable, it remains to be seen yet how much influence uh, the former president will still have over the Republican Party. But now with the second acquittal in the Senate, do you worry that we haven't yet seen the last of Donald Trump in Washington? Well, I don't think we've seen the last of holding Donald Trump accountable. You know, in the trial, I quoted Churchill. Uh, and as it relates to Donald Trump's accountability, we're not at the end of that exercise, we're not even at the beginning of the end, perhaps with impeachment being over, we're at the end of the beginning. But he has a uh, just an avalanche of criminal and civil cases coming his way, uh, rightfully so, and he's going to have to defend those. And I think he's gonna be quite busy living in courtrooms. And we even heard Mitch McConnell say President Trump has not gotten away with anything yet. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us tonight. My pleasure. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.